Okay, this is unit five, this is lesson one. This is the exposition, to use a literary term, of what the foreign exchange market is. So we're not talking about the foreign exchange market yet. You have to understand this before we can do the actual market. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about terms. You got all these terms, I highly recommend you write these down in your notebook. The first thing in unit five is called the balance of trade. We've done this before, when we talked about aggregate demand and the components of aggregate demand. The last one is net exports. So the balance of trade essentially is that. If the US, for example, has a trade deficit, we're talking about um, the trade between countries, goods and services. So one country, United States and Mexico, United States and Germany, something like that. So in the United States, imports are greater than the exports. So the US has a trade deficit. You know what this is, we're talking about goods and services. When we say trade balance, it means goods and services. The second one, this is more important, right? This is called the balance of payments, not the balance of trade, the balance of payments. So what does that mean? Well, it means all international transactions. So goods and services, but also financial transactions. And that's what we're talking about. Now there's two types. You have two accounts in the balance of payments. The first one is the current account. The second one is the financial or capital account. Those are two names for the same thing. So current account, financial and capital account, and the very specific things that are involved in them. So now I'll move you over here. All right, might be a little better to see. So the current account, we're gonna do, so current account, financial account, I'm gonna break it up. The current account has three components. The first one is net exports, All right? That might be a little confusing. You say, wait a minute, net exports is balance of trade, but just hang with me here. So net exports is trade between countries, goods, and services. So that has to do with your current account. The second part is anything that is investment income. What is investment income? I'll just give you an example. If you're a Japanese car producer and you're producing cars in the United States, so Toyota is a Japanese car company. They produce, let's say, in uh, Michigan, in Motor City, in Detroit. Um, the money that they earn right, in the US is considered investment income. That gets included in the current account along with trade between those countries, okay? The third part is called a net transfer, similar to transfer payment. If you recall what a transfer payment was, something like social security. Money is transferred from my check to my over 65 father's social security's check, right? Nothing is produced with a transfer. Well, similarly here, it's money that's transferred where nothing is produced. That gets counted in the current account. What are those money transfers? Something from money flows from private or public sectors. So donations, grants, aid, assistance are all considered uh, net transfers. These are in the current account. So then what's in the financial? Financial account is the following. Please, again, take some notes. The financial account is now measures the sale and purchase of financial assets abroad. Think what are financial assets should be your question. Well, we already know a few of them. So if you purchase something that continues to earn money, that's what an asset is. You're purchasing something that continues to own money like a bond or a business, okay? So imagine this is, again, this is abroad and domestic. This is happening, transferring between two countries. So for example, Korea buys a factory in Ohio. If you buy a good current account, if you buy a factory for someone else's business, capital or financial account. I buy a Japanese bond, financial account. When a foreign company buys a business in a different country, again, financial account. We'll look over here. The next topic, again, hope you got those notes down, is net capital outflow, okay? Think of this as the flow of money. So the flow of uh, currency coming from Japan to buy things and the flow of currency coming from the US to buy things in Japan. Okay, so net capital outflow. Outflow means the flow of the money is floating out. The opposite would be inflow, the money's coming in. So what is net capital outflow? The difference between the purchase of foreign assets and domestic assets purchased by foreigners. Say that again. The difference between the purchase of foreign assets, buying foreign assets abroad, and the domestic assets purchased by foreigners. Oh, you're buying my stuff, right? So it's kind of like we did trade surplus before, right? Good. It was exports and imports. Well, we're talking about importing and exporting finances, things like financial products, right? Think about that, a financial product. What's a financial product? A bond or a business. So what does that mean? Well, if you have a surplus in the financial account, it means that your inflow 
is greater than your outflow. So let's use the U.S. and Japan. If Japan is buying more of our financial assets, then the U.S. has a financial account or capital account surplus. In the opposite, we have a deficit if we're buying more assets abroad, so our outflow is greater than Japan's you know, with us. Currently, China buys most of our bonds. I'm not going to say all of our bonds, of course, but uh, China has a huge interest in investing in American businesses because we have the greatest demand for their products. So what do we have? See if you can figure it out. A surplus or a deficit with China. So let's look at both of them. What do you need to know, right? For the exam, for the test, for the topic. What is the current account when it's versus or compared to the financial or capital account? So if you remember this, this you really should write down. So a deficit in one country means that there must be a surplus or oh, I'm sorry, a deficit in one account means there must be a surplus in the other. A surplus in this account means there must be a deficit in the other. So let's look at an example. Country A, if they're buying more goods from country B, that means that country B is buying more financial assets from country A. Okay, Think of it this way. Our dollars are buying their goods and we're giving them our currency. Well, what do they do with our currency? They buy our financial assets, right? Their outflow of currency increases in that sense. So in that example, country A under the current account in this example would have a deficit in the current account. Okay? They're buying more goods, right? So the trade surplus is a deficit. We're, we're importing more than we're exporting. And that means for country B, it's the opposite. They're exporting more than so they're going to have a surplus. Okay. For the financial account here, let me get rid of this. For the financial account, it's the opposite. For country A, they have a deficit when they buy more of the other country's goods. But the financially, they got money coming in buying their financial assets. So financially, they have a surplus. For country B, it's the opposite, right? Country B, the current account, they have a surplus in trade, right? Trade is leaving the country. They have a surplus in that, right? They're exporting more, so the tr current account surplus. However, they've got all this money from the other country buying goods for them, and they're going to purchase financial assets. Their outflow is greater than their inflow. They're going to have a deficit, all right? Let's look at a, a, another example and look at it in a different way, okay? So let's use China and the U.S., Let's assume that trade between both of these countries, U.S. and China, is balanced. So it's at zero, right? Financial and current account are both at zero. We start from a nice plane. What happens when the U.S. imports more goods from China? We're importing more. So the first thing, place I think you should start is the net exports for both countries. For the U.S., what happens to net exports? Well, net exports, we're importing more. So that means our net exports are going to be negative, whereas China's exporting more, they're going to be positive. This is going to have an impact on aggregate demand for both countries. So it might be helpful to think of the current account. This is the current account for the U.S., the current account for China up here. So I use the aggregate demand curve. Even though this isn't the best example, it'll help. So what happens to AD in the previous example? Well, net exports is going down for the U.S., so this is their current account, so AD is going to go to the left, right? Price level goes down, output goes down, but they're buying more stuff in China, so net exports increase, so AD goes to the right, AD2, right? And price level is going to go up, output's going to go up, Q2, all right? This is the current account, right? What happens in the current account? Well... If we're importing more, our AD goes to the left, that means our current account for the U.S. must be what? A deficit. Well, just the, so with the opposite, so they're going to have a current account. They're exporting more, so they're going to have a current account surplus. Now, when you look about the capital account, it's okay to think about the capital account as the loanable funds market for the U.S. and the loanable funds market for China. 
Well, if there's a current account deficit here, that means that for the U.S., money must be flowing in in the financial account from China for financial assets. We're buying goods from them. They're buying financial assets. So what that means that they're investing in us, which means our supply of loanable funds is going to shift to the right. Okay, and drop the real interest rate. So what does that mean? Our inflow of financial is greater. So that means we have a capital account or financial account surplus for the U.S. And it's just the opposite. There is money flowing out for, to buy financial assets. Chinese are buying financial assets from the U.S. So the supply of vulnerable funds in this case, they're going to be decreasing for China, which is going to up their interest rate. All right, so they have a capital account or a financial account deficit. Okay. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Got some questions for you and uh, do them and we'll, we'll go over them in class.